This is a short video explaining and demonstrating how David 3D laser scanner works. Instead of using a laser, however, we're using SLS structured light scanning setup. So this is the rig that I use. It's uh, actually an art easel that has a tripod and I've removed the top and 3D printed a small adapter to get my Dell M110 projector on. It's a really small and light projector. If I put my hand next to it, you can see how small it is. On this part of the easel, I have another 3D printed adapter and then a gooseneck, which I have adapted from a cheap lamp, and I have a Logitech webcam on that. Uh, the height of the tripod is adjustable. This individual section here wheels up and down to get the projector at the right height and also the gooseneck is obviously flexible for positioning the webcam and a nice thing about this webcam is when you finish you can just fold this section down and it will protect the lens. Other things that you need are a calibration corner uh, this is just um, a PDF that you print out and stick onto a 90 degree angle it's made of two panes of a series of dots, three of them which are circles and it uses this to work out where it's looking at in space. Other thing I have underneath is a small plastic lazy Susan which helps to rotate objects without losing the spot. Okay this is the main screen for David laser scan. The first thing we need to do is the hardware setup. At the moment we're seeing what the webcam is seeing and it's projecting onto our calibration corner a black and white pattern and you should use this to adjust the focus of both the camera and the projector until you've got the, not, the sharpest contrast between black and white possible and that's what these lines are here if this was perfect this would be the whitest white possible and this would be the blackest black possible and this red sine wave would be touching the blue at the top and bottom so generally you will play with your settings along here and also the lighting in the room the darker it is the better at the moment the room is not particularly dark so you could probably get a better scan by going to a darker room and filling with these settings until it turns out just right. Since we're using a projector instead of a laser we need to keep it on the structured light set up from here and we need to send our projection to screen number two. When you connect your projector you need to have it set to extended not mirrored or projector only. So it means on our screen one, the one that we're seeing now, we get the software and on screen two we get the pattern here. Last thing you need to do on this tab is to select your webcam and a resolution. Um, to a point you want your resolution as high as possible. It makes the file size a lot bigger so something like 800 by 600 seems to be a good compromise for me. Once you've set up that you can go your, to your camera calibration and it will project just white. You want your camera facing it so it can see the calibration corner and it can see the six circles quite clearly. Once you've done that, you can click calibrate. Okay, that was successful first go. You can see our little green and red marks are now matching the position and it can now use this to work out where the calibration corner is in space. When you print it out, you measure a point down the side of it and whatever scale you want to do, you just enter a different measurement here and that's how it works out how big the object is you're scanning. Okay, next on to structured light and we get our original pattern. And the first thing we need to do is to calibrate the projector now that the camera is calibrated. And to do that, we just click on calibrate. Okay, once that's done, it gives us the information and it's detected the angle and the position of the camera and the projector. So now if we go to our all view, we get a 3D representation of what it is it thinks it's seeing. So it thinks the camera 
is just below to the left, so the projector just above it to the right, and it's predicting where the calibration corner is, and it's showing us what we're actually seeing here. Once we've set up this, we're ready to actually start scanning. So this is will be set during the calibration, but you can manually override it, and then when you're ready, you can hit start. One last thing, you can actually remove the calibration corner from this point onwards. You don't actually need it, it's all set up. And once you're ready, you put your item in place. We have a wooden D, and you hit start. Okay, so that was a nice fast scan. Not too bad for the quality. You can see these ripples here. They will become less and less the better you get the contrast between the black and the white. Angles, and here's something that I've done earlier of the deer and this was with texture turned on and you can see they're a lot smoother and better quality so the most laborious part of the process is to now go through and do some selections and we want to cut out all the noise double click to finish and then parts are highlighted red and you can simply press the delete key to remove them. So the more calibration you can do at the beginning, setting up your depth for the foreground and the background, the min and the max, the more time you'll save at this stage. But eventually you'll end up with a whole bunch of shapes which are ready to go. And this is where David Scan really excels all of the noise and now we can demonstrate the way David Scan will align this for us. So we come over to alignment and we can go to free and we click here and it's going to ask for two scans. So we click one, we click the other and hopefully as the progress bar fills up it will rotate them and try different positions until it finds a very close match and it looks like it's done that quite quickly. If you try to do this without cleaning up the noise, because the noise is in the same position on the ground and the actual object keeps rotating, it finds it very confusing to get it right. So there's more than one type of alignment. There's ones for fine alignment after we've done the initial ones and that actually looks quite good so it's worked out the two scans so if we undo that to see how they started versus how they finished up you can see that it's matched them up really nicely now you can see that you would need to take enough scans to get more or less a 360 degree view of the deer once you've done that you come across to this fuse button you set your quality um, whether you want it to close any holes, so if you want a solid object, a manifold object, you need to tick that and then you click fuse and that can take a little while to do and I haven't cleaned up all the scans so instead what we'll do is open a finished fused object and see how the final result looks Okay, so here we have our finished object. It's closed up any holes. So on the underside, because we couldn't scan it, we can see that it's filled it in underneath. And we have a pretty nice representation of the deer. Texture is turned on at the moment. Um, the way they have the light settings, you can see a bit of a rainbow effect, but I've got that to work better in the past. Um, from here, you would normally import the 
OBJ file into something like MeshLab and maybe do a triangle reduction to get the file size smaller and then you might put it in something like Mesh Mixer to do a plane cut through the bottom to get a nice flat base ready to 3D print.